Tim with Rescue Methods. In this segment, we want to kind of talk a little bit about um, water flow, at least getting started with water flow and aerial operations. Uh, based on the assumption that, you know, they drive this truck into your firehouse and dump it off and you have no, you never touch this vehicle again, what are some considerations that I would want to know as a uh, ladder driver, chauffeur, or so forth about putting water through this aerial? Uh, number one, first and foremost, is you want to know how to put, how to transfer from, from road to pump um, in the sequence of that, that transfer process. So putting it, being able to put it in pump gear. Uh, number two, that's if it has a pump on it, you know. If it's a tractor drawn, in our case, they're going to drive it in, it's going to be an extra piece, it doesn't have a pump. So we need to know uh, some, some things that are obviously a little different. When it comes to aerials and uh, pump, no pump, you know, most all of these types of vehicles that have a pump on them ha also have the capability of being uh, having water pushed through the aerial without going through the pump. Um, obviously not the case in every situation but a lot of them do. So you, you want to be looking for that as well. Additionally, <clears throat> one of the things that you want to concern yourself is with, with is uh, size of the intakes, what the capability is to get water into the vehicle and also out of the out of the aerial. In this case we've got a uh, midship mount Hale Q-Max uh, 200 pump. It's a 2,000 gallon a minute pump. It's rated at, at 1,500. Uh, so we're actually rated a little bit below what the capability of the pump is. The the, the, the limiting factor when it comes to aerial operations is water supply. If we can, in this case, this truck will easily flow or has a capability to flow between 1,800 and 2,000 gallons per minute on a pressurized water source. The, the limiting factor here is can we get that amount of water into the vehicle efficiently and effectively? In this case, if we utilize a single 5-inch intake, the answer to that is going to be no you're not going to be able to generate that kind of flow from one single five inch intake. Now if you start looking at doing things like bringing five inch in and augmenting with either a second five inch or additional three inch lines, we can very easily achieve that flow out the aerial. So when it comes to big fire, you know, that whole concept, big fire, big water, you know, I don't think water, it gets any bigger than putting, putting an aerial platform in in the right position and flowing from from either a single or multiple uh, operating air, uh, aerial nozzles. So, you know, capacity becomes important. Understanding that the limiting flow or, or limiting factor for our discharge is is most of the time the water supply that we have available becomes very important. And then the interaction between whether or not you have a pump and, or whether or not you're a tiller or or you you don't have a pump and it's you're, you're just an aerial that also becomes important. If it's my truck uh, downtown, you know we basically ask an engine company to lay us two three inch lines into our intakes below the turntable and we ask them to give us 200 psi at that intake so we don't necessarily give them a pump pressure we ask them to figure for their own friction loss distance and water supply give us 200 psi at the intake beneath the 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 turntable the reason for that is what we have found is that when we're at our steepest angle that 200 psi gives us the ability to overcome our longest length and to provide greatest flow. So, you, so one of the things that you have to remember about pumping through an aerial is the closer you get to parallel with the ground, in this case, the easier that pumping operation becomes. So as we raise that aerial, whether it's a platform or an aerial ladder, we're always pumping against gravity. <clears throat> Additionally, one question that you have to ask yourself is, is your waterway pre-piped or are you stretching hose up the aerial? If your waterway is pre-piped, you almost universally are going to have a better flow capability than if you have to stretch three or four inch line up the aerial to, and connect it to, a, to an aerial nozzle that's not permanently attached to the end of the stick. 
So there's a lot of different things to consider when we start talking about elevated master streams and utilizing either platforms or aerials. And I think probably as we go through the, our, our segments on water flow and aerials and, and aerial master stream devices, we'll break that apart into two separate segments and talk about aerials and, and then also try to cover those midship mount or, or air, uh, excuse me, platforms with a, with a pump on them. So uh, keep in mind, you know, to be able to flow big water, we have to be able to bring in big water. And uh, you know, you want to have that in the back of your head as far as when you're in the driving position and it comes time to be able to set this thing up and, and make that attack.